Hey guys, I'm Fancy. And I'm Colleen. And this is Murder by Design. So hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. We have one of our favorite guests on today. Um, this is Stephen David Lampley. Do you want to tell our listeners who you are? Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that's, you know, tell us about yourself. I'm like, okay, my name is, <laughs> and this is my date of birth, and uh, that's me. But uh, uh, 21 years, law enforcement, retired, uh, police officer, SVU detective, uh, riot team, mm -hmm. uh, firearms instructor, a bunch of stuff. And now you stuff. are at the Oliphant Institute, which we are just loving your classes right now. I have taken, I think I've taken three so far. I'm hoping to take your advanced ones when you start getting into the profiling of the serial killers. Those are going to be amazing, I think. Yeah, we have a whole string of those. We're, we're going to try to select, or we have tried to select, and we're going to duplicate some too because some serial killers just uh, – Mm -hmm. There's certain things about them that are, while they may be the same as another, there's certain things that need to be brought out. So we're, we're going to try to select a wide variety of them, uh, organized, disorganized, and, and different uh, MOs and different uh, signatures. But we may duplicate some too, just simply because that just need, you know, we need to talk about them. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's so cool. I was really excited about the pollen one, and then you canceled it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we decided there was more information we needed to add. So rather than do one that we weren't right, going to be as happy with as the other one, we were happy with the one we had, but oh, well, wait a minute, let's, let's, let's put this in. So we didn't want to do one that was going to be less than the rest of them. So we just pulled yeah. it. So. Yeah. Um, are you guys going to cover – serial killers in other countries besides the U.S.? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I don't, we haven't talked, we haven't actually thought about that, to be honest. Uh, probably not. I, I think there's just won't. a couple in England and I think a couple in France that I think are very, very interesting. Or was it Germany, the nanny killers? Mm -hmm. oh, so fascinating. Yeah, I, I don't know. We haven't actually talked about that, so I don't know. That could be a separate, like, whole course. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> Keep we, adding we, uh, that to the, your list of stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, like I have nothing. <laughs> yeah, no. like you haven't been busy for the last, you know, week like crazy. So. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's okay. You know, it it, it happens. It's, right. So you just have to. So I'm ha I'm having to learn time management, like like major scale, mm -hmm. and having to you know what's important and what's not. This has to go that. So yeah, sure. it's it's uh, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, one of the, you mentioned one of the things that we actually wanted to have you on the today specifically for, and that was the fact that you were part of the riot team. Yes. So um, obviously that's very pertinent to what is going on in the country yeah. right now. Um, you know, we're seeing, yes, we're seeing, you know, peaceful protests, but we're also seeing a lot of rioting. Um, we watched the Amazon building in California just burn sure. to the ground last night. That was just, I mean, it, we've seen some pretty catastrophic things happening from this. There's been deaths from it. There's been all kinds of different things yeah. that have happened from this. And I wanted to bring you on tonight to talk about your experience with rioting and, you know, what, I know you, you, you were part of the rioting team down in Alabama, correct? Yes, Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what you experienced and then we'll kind of go into a little bit about what's going on right now and what we should or shouldn't be seeing happening. Well, the only, actually the only time that we were deployed on anything, I mean, significant, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember. I, I want to say it was 1992. Mm -hmm. There was a, uh, and there was some discrepancy on how this was, how this was allowed to happen at the same time. But basically what happened, the city issued uh, protest permits uh, to two different diametrically different groups. Oh, wow. uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know now how they were listed. I mm -hmm. don't know what the official term was on the permit, but basically what we had was two op opposing groups who wanted to protest at the same place at the same time. Ooh. Oh, and 
loosely, loosely describing who they were. We had on one side the white supremacists, which would be the uh, skinheads and the KKK. And on the other, other side, we had uh, people representing Malcolm X and, and other like-minded groups. And they wanted to protest same time, same place. Uh, oh, rather, yeah, I, I can see how that would be yeah. an issue. That's yeah. probably not something you want to do. But and I and I, again, I'm not in the administration. I'm not even trying to second guess. The <laughs> how that I'm came thinking, down, okay, right? But it certainly shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. Well, why would you? You know, obviously, you don't want to revoke one permit because then you start a whole thing. But why oh, God, not yeah. revoke? Why not revoke both of them and right. start over? But yeah. that didn't happen. So uh, we were called out on that, and that was. Uh, it went well and the way it was handled was very professional mm -hmm. uh both sides i mean yeah i'm sure there were some that didn't like it they're always you can't please everybody sure. but it, there were only minor one-on-one -on -one scrimmages uh it was not a big melee it went very well uh, and from from the position where i was we basically i don't remember how many of us that that was that was on that line but it was basically a single line of officers just me and right. uh, and the guy behind me. We were single line, and we were pretty. We were well, not pretty much. We were the only dividing line between the two groups. But wow. what they did was, and they did they did put up a fence, large, I think, ten foot fence, uh, and at times that fence bowed significantly. And there were times I questioned my career. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. Like, right. why in the heck am I standing right here right now? But yeah. uh, it went well. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the, my picture actually made Newsweek, they, very poor quality based on the copies I've, since it's been copied, copied, copied. Uh, CNN was there. Of course, now you have to understand the history of Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, Alabama from the 60s. That played into the news media as well. That, that yeah. was, and then they told us that in the meetings, we had several meetings uh, prior to this. And they said, this is going to be a media event. And it was, mm -hmm. it was a media. Yeah. And fortunately, uh, yeah, it went well. It really did. Besides the individual stuff, it, it was very peaceful for the most part. Good, good. So that kind of shows that despite, you know, there being such, I mean, there's hatred on both sides of that party, sure. both sides of those lines, sure. um, that it, it was able to at least be handled professionally if, you know, there's not, you know, a ton of violence happening, a lot of, um, it was a severe violence. So can you explain from the law enforcement perspective, what's the difference between a protest and a riot? Well, it's, I mean, it's pretty, uh, you have a protest and, and by all means, we've guaranteed the right to protest. We're, we're guaranteed that right. The constitution guarantees us that. And by all means, everyone should take advantage of their rights. They have those. Uh, what happens though, is when you, you may start out, I'm not saying all peaceful rights, peaceful uh, protests start out as rights. Sometimes they do. Sometimes it just goes right into full stage. You know, our intent is to riot and that's what we're going to do. But riot is when you're, you're damaging somebody else's property, uh, when you're tearing something up, when you're stealing something. And it's done in a large group of folks, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so what are you seeing today that is maybe the same or different from what you saw in the riots that you, you know, the, 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 the part that you took place in? Uh, well, ours was uh, scheduled. Right. You know, ours and both sides got a permit. They, they got permission to do this. And mm -hmm. we knew in advance that there was going to be problems and you, mm -hmm. we, we knew where the problems were going to be. So we tried to anticipate as best we could what those problems might be, how to, to separate the groups uh, and still, still give them the right by the Constitution to protest and, and do all that at the same time. So we had a little, we had a little heads up because we knew who we were going to be having. We knew the location. We knew it was going to be contained. So we had a, we had a big heads up on that. Yeah, I think this is something that no, no one has seen, you know, and my dad said it was similar to what happened back in the 60s, you know, during the protests and the riots for Vietnam yeah. War, but that he's not seen anything like this. And my dad's a career, you know, military man and, and, mili and, and police officer. Um, so he sure. said he'd never seen anything like this since then, you know, but that it was very similar to that. Um, but that, you know, he's very concerned himself. Sure. Um, so as a police officer out there dealing with this, what, what should we be seeing? And are they 
do you feel that they are doing the things that, that they're supposed to be doing or could they be doing something better to kind of maybe bring this back down? Well, you have to understand that when you have you have a peaceful protest, you, you know, and they're peaceful and they're doing what they're supposed to do along the guidelines and, and stuff. And, and that's fine. It, mm -hmm. it goes well. But when you have a riot, pretty much all bets are off and all rules are off a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what you have from one moment to the next. Uh, and I, and I, I understand, or at least what I'm being, what I'm seeing or what I'm being told, there's some really good communication going on between these mm -hmm. rioters. So, yeah. you know, you could have a group of rioters over here doing something and I'm saying maybe they got a call. Well, come over here. I, I don't know if that's what they're mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. but you're having these disbursements and police officers, where do you go? And you've got to understand that police officers are uh, typically X number of officers per thousand. And we're mm -hmm. talking single digits sometimes. Uh, so when you're having to, when you have a limited supply, when you have a limited inventory of officers, uh, having to deal with hundreds or maybe potentially thousands of people, that's tough. And you're going to have to react the best way you have uh, to react. Peace, you know, do it peacefully, do it according to rules, according to regulations. But you have, also have to understand they're not abiding by any rules or regulations. They don't have it. They don't have to abide by those. Police officers do. So they've got to constantly keep that in the back of their mind. Okay, we can't do that. We can't do this. We, this is, these are the tools. These are the formations. This is, the, this is what we have to work with. We only have uh, uh, RCA, riot control agents, the lacrimal stuff. On the, on the, you know, this is stuff we have to work with. We can't just do what they, you know, well, as they're doing, whatever. So they have guidelines. Uh, so, but the police, the police officers are having a real hard time keeping up with all this. Uh, right. And yes, there will be mistakes made because you don't know what's going on from moment to moment. There are mistakes and there will be mistakes made. Mm -hmm. And I so, think, go ahead, Colleen. So I think the biggest uh, issue that has come about in the last two weeks that's been getting most of the media attention and a lot of, I mean, the worldwide attention, I mean, especially from Australia, was Monday night um, with the tear gas on the, and rubber bullets at the peaceful protesters in front of St. John's. Um, do you have an opinion on what happened? It was peaceful, yes. Um, they were um, kind of, there was like the riot shield separating the uh, law enforcement and the protesters mm -hmm. in the, there were, you know, thousands of people there. And there were a few people who like threw water bottles over True. the shields at um, them. And then all of a sudden um, tear gas was de like shot out canisters, mm -hmm. giant rubber bullets um, to bring people back. Like I think it was like two blocks um, and for what we know now, when uh, the White House and Attorney General have admitted that it was so that uh, the president could go to St. John's Church. And so people across the country are outraged because there were a lot of international media that were there as well that mm -hmm. were hit. Um, and how it was for on peaceful protesters, not, you know, there were no web, the protesters didn't have weapons. Um, but they did they lob. Attacking. I mean, they did lob things at them over the shields, Colleen. So that takes but, that. Takes but it's away water bottles. That's still. It's still t t throwing things at the police. That make that takes it away from being a peaceful protest into a riot. I mean, uh, I get uh, on, on that. Uh, there is, and I don't know how much you or your, or your viewers know. There's such a thing is called a continuum of force, uh, and it's basically a ladder one rung after another. And I don't know of any police department, including the Department of Justice, that doesn't utilize this. This is a, this is a, a method, methodical, excuse me, methodical <laughs> process. You only use the amount of force necessary to subdue the action, okay? So yeah. what, what basically, when you have a riot team, the first use of force is not really a use of force, it's just the presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you, but maybe you're, maybe you're having a peaceful protest or maybe you're having a riot. The first, I guess the first rung on that ladder is simply by the riot team being there. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, the riots teams here. We need to not do this. That's the first. If that doesn't work, then, then there's certain procedures. Uh, actually we were taught to stomp our feet. Mm -hmm. to create that, that noise. In other words, right. the trumpet sounding in the heavens, we're here, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and the baton hitting the, the sh get your attention. Of, we're here and we're here for a reason. If mm -hmm. that doesn't work, then you go to the next. Uh, mm -hmm. If, if you needing, and, and when you have, a, whenever you have a dignitary, such as a president, whether it's ours, somebody mm -hmm. else's or, or anybody from some other country, even coming to visit, there's a there's an immense security problem there's an mm -hmm. security interest right off the bat mm -hmm. years ago when i worked for the birmingham police department uh vice president quail came to town and being on the riot team i was part of that uh, that detail to protect him mm -hmm. uh and the of course the secret service came in days before and did a lot of prep and what happened with that and it made a lot of people angry but you've got you have to there's certain security issues you have to do to protect these people. There's just so many, the, the bigger you right. get in the news, the more people want you for some reason. So, right. It was like, but it was an unannounced uh, yeah. photo visit. So yeah. like they had been there for hours, for days. And then all of a mm -hmm. sudden yeah. they were pushed back uh, without warning. Um, and so I guess that, you know, there's some, different maybe discrepancies on what you know can constitute does throwing water constitute the use of tear gas and pepper spray and rubber bullets it depends on the situation again now let's say right. that they're present they they need to clear the area for whatever reason whether it's mm -hmm. trump and i'm not going to get political here but it's trump right. whether it's Putin anybody or anybody shows up that has a position like that mm -hmm. uh you you you've got to protect them. You're, that's that's your problem. That's your your mm -hmm. goal is to protect them. Uh, if if the presence doesn't work, if all those processes don't work, and they need the the crowd to disperse, they're going to use the less lethal method. And obviously, if they don't leave, they're not going to kill them. That's that's not an option. But they right. may deploy gas in order to disperse the crowd because there's uh, the riot team's responsibility is to disperse crowds, uh, control riots, maintain public order, protect property. Uh, mm -hmm. There's several things that they do. So if they need some, uh, even a peaceful crowd to leave and they don't leave, then if that's a lawful order in order to leave, then they've got to take the next step or whatever that may. And I wasn't there and I'm not right. trying to second guess anybody. Right. But when you have, when you have, and I've been in a situation where we had officers and objects were hurled. We don't know what's in those bottles. Right. So, it could be acid. It could be water. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to defend anybody, but they don't know yet. Right. So when you're met and in just bottles, you ever been hit with a water bottle hurts like hell. Oh, uh, yeah. right. And, <laughs> and I know they have, and I, and I get they have shields and they have helmets. I right. do the same thing. Sure. Sure. But they're, they're going to try a, a good riot team is going to try to react in a proper method and only go and, and in, in the use of force continuum, you go to the next level above. You don't meet force with force. You have to overcome that force. So you're going to go to the next level. Right. Right. If that doesn't work. Right. If they, they meet that or come up, then you're you just, it's, it's sure. a right ladder. Continuum you and you go, up, you right. go as far as you need to go. Yeah. Right. Now, do you think that, that the, the volatile situation, you know, that it's being compounded by the fact that this really is something where the people are angry with the police themselves. So, it's compounding this and it's creating an even more volatile situation um, because it's mostly charged on both sides. Even though you guys have been trained, you know, to mm. not react, I'm sure that emotionally, you know, this has got to be hard for everybody. Well, it is hard. It's hard for everybody. And, I, and I'll be the first. Uh, there aren't many people that dislike a bad cop more than another cop, more than a good cop. Uh, I, I wasn't there what happened, but there, I don't know of any police department. And I certainly wasn't trained that you put your knee in the neck of somebody. Sure. You know, and I, I wasn't there that. again, but I, I was not trained that way. Right. Yep. So what I saw in my opinion was wrong. That I don't, Absolutely. that did not need to happen. And I would be upset too. Mm -hmm. I, I, they have every right to peacefully cross every right whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't be out there with them. Right. That was, mm -hmm. just, my opinion, that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
and by all means they have that right. But when, but when you, you start turning that to tearing up somebody else's property that had nothing to do or, or even did had right. nothing to do with that. I, right. That's, I understand, I understand right. the frustration and anger. I do. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But when you, when creating another crime doesn't make the first crime better. Right. Right. So that's why we have, um, our campaign going with love wins because it yeah. violence begets violence. It does no good to burn down a police station. We talked with Cheryl McCollum about that, about mm -hmm. how there's evidence that is now destroyed yeah. and you know, that it's not going to do anybody any good because now they can't even police their own city. They don't have the equipment they need. It's that was wrong on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, especially in DC, like, the church had nothing to do with it. Luckily, it was just, you know, one room in a basement that was destroyed and the church itself is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but, you National know... National monuments that have been destroyed. They are graffitied. They are destroyed. They have been pushed Right, there, they it's going broke. to be... They have there are a lot of Confederate into, monuments that have been destroyed. They have also gone into uh, cemeteries and broken it, broken the cemeteries. A lot of the military cemeteries. Right, and that's... that's There's a lot right, and those are wrong. Who lost their lives. So this is very... Right, serious. it's... But I right, it's, and those are wrong, but I believe that majority of the people are there for the right reason. Sure, sure. So, I mean, what do you think, Stephen? Where do we go from here to try and, and bring some peace and order back to, to where we're at? You know, I mean, we were already kind of on the edge, brink of, of you know, having hard times through just the pandemic. And to add this on top of this, you know, mm -hmm. what do we really need to see to, to kind of bring, a part, bring, bring the change that, that we need? Well, you have a group of people who feel that they need to riot. What is that reason? Why? How do we address that? How do we stop that? I mean, mm -hmm. are they are there are there reasonable solutions, or right. are these unreasonable solutions? Right. Uh, on both sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are, are mm -hmm. we going to be able to agree on something? Uh, but we're going to have to sit down to do that. We're going to have to stop the rioting first. Right. We're going to have to stop that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Now and. Uh, Yes, we also need to look at some policies and procedures of police departments. But again, I'm going to go back to the fact that in the police academy and even outside with my field training officer, which was an amazing, amazing officer, uh, mm -hmm. I was never, and I don't know of any officer that I, that I know of that I've gone, that I've talked with over the years, that was ever trained to put their knee on somebody's neck. Correct. And, and it's uh, so not that, just this time. I've seen it happen. It happened a couple of years back, um, the same situation and that the, those officers made fun of, of the young man. Um, and, it, you know, of course, it wasn't a black man in that, in that situation. It was, it was a white man. But it was the same situation, the knee on the neck. And um, I, again, the, the, everyone that I've talked to, like you're saying, said that's absolutely what we're trained not to do. You know, mm -hmm. this is, we're not trained to do this. So that, is, that is a decision of one man, not a decision of a department yeah. or, or, or even an organization across the country, you know, so... So we we're going to, and back to that. We're, we're going to have to mm -hmm. at some point. First, we got to do is, is, is get calm. Mm -hmm. we, we can't really have any discussion until we calm things down because we're too busy with our our human capital, so to speak, to yes. try to stop and save property and save lives. Yeah, so we're going to have to stop that and then sit down. Let's have some. And I know we hear this all the time. Have some adult conversation and try to come up with something that works for both sides. Right. Mm -hmm. I know that probably seems a. Uh, maybe pie in the sky, but that's, <laughs> and everybody says that, but right. that's what has to happen. Right. right. I think it's been a lot of, you know, pent up anger for, I mean, centuries at this point, but mm -hmm. um, compounded over the last few years and um, with unneeded death and on both sides, there are police officers who are killed in the line of duty for been just showing over. up. It's, and that is senseless violence mm -hmm. um, that it should not be tolerated. Uh, but do you think that, I mean, so I know a lot of people are, I think has qualmed the anger now that the other three officers for in the George Floyd case directly were arrested. Um, and, you know, there are a few other names that are getting, you know, shout out that they you don't want justice for the frustration that people have you know again there are bad apples you know across different 
workplaces, I mean, like, there are bad nurses, there are bad physicians, every career sector has bad people in it. But I think now, you know, people want, you know, justice reform and not just for, you know, racial communities, but across the board justice reforms um, and criminal justice reform. So I think, do you think that people will stop the, you know, the protesting, the mass gatherings? What do you think is going to make them stop? I don't know. And if we knew we could get them to, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. I, I don't know what it's going to take. Uh, I wish I had an answer. Uh, you know, that we, we could, we could stop it. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. What do you think the peaceful protesters should do to be able to stop any violence that is occurring at those protests, whether it's from their side, the you know, people who are starting the riots or to not be, you know, attacked from the other side. So what should they be doing? What should people be doing, not doing? I, I don't know that there's anything they can. When you have a riot, you have a bunch of people that are, for the most part, acting on emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're out there doing things. And when you have that, you also get what's called a mob or crowd mentality where they feed off each other. And it's just like a frenzy and reasoning typically doesn't work in that, in that particular environment at that time. So I don't know that there's a lot they can do except to plead and ask and, you know, and hope for the best with that. Because when you've got people that are dead set on doing something like that, it's hard to, it's hard to stop when it, when it starts. I mean, if That's, it were me, if it were me, my answer would be if, if I'm peacefully protesting and it turns into a riot at that point, I would leave and I would do my peaceful thing somewhere else because I wouldn't yeah. stay where people are rioting like that no, and, and trying to use what I am doing for good for something that is not good. So I think sure. that would be the message that if it were me and I'm not a police officer, I'm not, I'm not, you know, out there protesting right now. I'm not doing any of those things, but if it were me and I was out there protesting because I do believe in peaceful protest, I believe it's something mm -hmm. that our country's built on and needs. And we have a right to say things, you know, that's why we help. That's why I'm a big proponent of freedom of speech, you know? Sure. So that is my answer would be, I would go find a new place to be peaceful and be like, nope, nope, that is not us. We are not doing that. We are going somewhere else. Definitely. Yeah. If you're a peaceful protester, yeah. if I was a peaceful protester and the riot started, I'm gone. I don't, I don't want to be associated with that. I don't want to be a part of that. And I'm gone. Yeah. And I think that's I, one I of the problems that, that they're not leaving. So then they get blamed. Sure. Well, right. And I think that this week has been a much better week in terms of the protests last week. I think there was a lot of, a lot more rioting. I mean, it was, that's when I think a lot of the major destruction and violence was happening. Um, and I think because of it, you know, this week, more of the peaceful people have been, you know, policing their own people and trying to keep things peaceful and getting people to you know leave like you know there haven't been as many fires there hasn't been as much you know breaking in destruction um as there was last week sure. um sure. and so i think that is a lot of people are like you know leave leave if you're gonna do it or if you see it happening we're out of here right they don't want this movement to be destroyed because of the bad people on their side. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, like we said earlier, mistakes have been made on, on both sides. So, you know, yeah, it's yeah. going gonna, gonna to take a, a lot of peace, a lot of, like, like Steven said, a lot of conversation, a lot of what we're trying to do with our campaign is our campaign is in the name of peace, you know, and, and love wins and giving leading with love instead of leading with hate, you know? So, um, Stephen, we thank you so very much for being You're here welcome. tonight. Um, you know, he is one of our very favorite guests. We enjoy it every time he comes on. He's got great information and he'll be joining us, you know, on a regular basis. So we're really excited about that. Extremely excited about that, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, Looking forward. but thank you so much, unless there's anything else you'd like to say tonight, but. Any messages you want to leave with our listeners? 
No, because I don't want to get started. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but I do appreciate you asking me, and it's been an honor to join both of you mm -hmm. and looking forward to coming on again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so Good much. One. Hey guys, so a couple nights ago, we launched a special campaign along with Cheryl McCollum from the Cold Case Research Institute called Love Wins. And what this is, is it is our answer to all the chaos that's kind of going on right now. Um, the chaos from the riots, the chaos from all the different, you know, pandemic, everything that's happening in our lives right now. Uh, all the the issues with you know the different lost lives that we've had from before the protesting after the protesting so all the lost lives that have come out of this uh, the lost lives of COVID even and so hashtag love wins is a movement to usher in peace and knowing that above all the only way that we're going to get through all of this is loving each other. So what we're at, what we're actually doing here is we are creating a scholarship fund in remembrance of all the lost lives in 2020 so far and ushering in peace. And this scholarship fund will go to anyone that wants to go ahead and, and enter to win. Um, the criteria is really cool. All you have to do is make a 30 second video of yourself and explaining to us how you lead with love. And we are looking for college age students that are, you know, struggling. Maybe they can't get scholarships. Maybe they, there's a reason, you know, that they aren't available for them or it's just not enough for them. And so this is our way of helping out. We're hoping to raise about $5,000. If we raise more than that, uh, then we'll look into giving more than one scholarship away. The way that we're doing this is we have some merchandise. It's hashtag love wins merchandise. And there's also lead with love merchandise. Uh, they've got shirts, cups, mugs, stickers, anything you could possibly want. And we're going to have it on a couple different platforms. Currently, we're doing some on Tee Public, but I'm working on some on Cafe Press too because they have a lot more variety of uh, merchandise. And so we'll be donating a portion of the proceeds that we collect on this merchandise to the scholarship fund that we are creating. And then we also have a GoFundMe that will be listed in the show notes of our YouTube show and our podcast. And you guys can click on it and you can donate any amount you'd like. And all of the proceeds from that are going to go ahead and go to the scholarship fund. And we'll be showing you exactly how the money is distributed, how it's collected. We're going to be very transparent with this. We're working with some amazing professionals that uh, you know, from like Cheryl from the Cold Case Institute, Stephen David Lampley from the Oliphant Institute, uh, the leading death investigator, Joseph Scott Morgan. So we're, we're working with all of them to really show how much love wins over everything and bringing peace to a country that really, we really need it right now. So that's what we're doing. And we're going to go ahead and play our entries at the top of every podcast and every YouTube until we choose a winner. And our special guests that we have each week, uh, you know, the different people that come on and, and are here with us, Cheryl and Steven and Joseph, they'll all be a part of choosing that lucky winner or winners, depending on how much we end up getting donated. So I hope that you guys join us in hashtag love wins. And we hope that we get some really great entrance because we really want to see how you lead with love. Thanks so much for tuning in and dishing true crime with the good wives and murder by design. Don't forget to join our Patreon member club to get exclusive mini episodes, inside documents and pictures from the case, live YouTube discussions, our exclusive discussion group on Facebook, and get some amazing good wives merchandise. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at True Crime Wives. And for more inside information, check out our podcast, The Good Wives Guide to True Crime, on any of your favorite podcast players. Have a good one from The Good Wives, serving up true crime one dish at a time.